Fitzpatrick is unsigned for 2021. His two-year deal with the Dolphins has run out. This is what makes fans angry, so let's find out why and is there a possibility Dolphins will choose another QB to replace the 38-year-old Fitzpatrick. The Miami Dolphins will go quarterback shopping this offseason. You might have thought that wasn't possible because general manager Chris Greer only days ago uttered the words that seemingly nullified that possibility, Tua is our starter, Greer said of Tua Tungavailoa. And, yes, that seemingly settles the issue about Tungavailoa. But, again, the Dolphins will go quarterback shopping this offseason. That's because the team needs a backup quarterback. And unlike their commitment to Tungavailoa for 2021, the Dolphins declined to make any promise to bring back Ryan Fitzpatrick, who was Miami's quarterback most of the past two seasons. We've got to go through a full process, a full evaluation, Coach Brian Flores said. We'll evaluate offense, defense, special team, teams and then we'll create a vision of what we want our team to look like in 2021. You don't do that one day or two days after the season. Chris and I both, we talk about this extensively, we don't think that's the best way to make decisions. We're not going to rush anything. We're going to take our time with it. Obviously, Fitz, along with all of the free agents, are going to be a part of the conversation because we know them. We're not going to sit here and say, hey, we might want to do this, that or the other. We've got to go through it and be as thorough as possible and try to make the best decisions for this organization. Let's be clear what just happened, the Dolphins fully committed to a player they've been around one season. But they spoke of needing a full evaluation process for a player they've been around longer and no more. Yeah, the chances of Fitzpatrick returning to the Dolphins next season are slim and none. Appreciate your effort, leadership, fun style of play and thoughtful quotes during press conferences. But it, but it would be a huge surprise if you return to the Miami Dolphins. And why is that? Well, it's a two-sided issue. Fitzpatrick is unsigned for 2021. His two-year deal with the Dolphins, meant to bridge the gap between the Ryan Tanhill era and the next great quarterback in club history, has run out. And that affords everyone options. Fitzpatrick, 38, believes he's playing at the highest level of career. He's said as much. And having thrown 13 touchdowns versus 8 interceptions, with a 68.5 completion percentage and a 95.6 rating that ranks 17th in the league, Fitzpatrick can make the argument he deserves to compete for a starting NFL job. And he does. And, just as he did in 2019 when he moved on from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, he might get the opportunity to join such a competition from a team with an uncertain quarterback situation. New England, Denver, Jacksonville, Washington, Chicago and San Francisco all go into the offseason with uncertain quarterback situations. A couple of others might join the list. And even if those teams address their uncertainty in the draft, as Jacksonville is certain to do, there's still something to be said for giving a rookie quarterback the benefit of learning how to be a professional from a consummate professional such as Fitzpatrick also alleviates the urgency to start that rookie immediately. All those virtues make Fitzpatrick marketable. Attractive. So why wouldn't the Dolphins want to simply return him next year and enjoy the many Fitz benefits? Well, they might. Flores said there will be an evaluation and so the door remains ajar. But, let's be honest, the Fitzpatrick dynamic in Miami has run its course. He was a great help to the Dolphins during the 2019 tank job when he was the third quarterback the team tried to sign after trading Tanhill. He was a great help last season as the starter at the beginning of the season and the closer at the end once Tungavailoa took the offense's reins. That latter role isn't profitable for the Dolphins anymore. The Dolphins need Tungavailoa next season to finish what he started. Because one supposes if they're committed to him starting, they're also committed to him finishing. Otherwise they'd be authoring a mess. Flores didn't mind stirring things up a bit in turning to Fitzpatrick a couple of times in games Tungavailoa, games Tungavailoa struggled last season. He did it, he said, as his best recourse for winning a game. That works, sort of, when the starter is a rookie and not established. But do that with a second-year veteran and you've got a quarterback controversy. Do that and you're hurting the starter's ability to lead. You're negatively affecting his standing among teammates and you're showing only limited confidence in a player who needs more, not less, support. Flores might not agree with that last paragraph at all. Many defensive-minded coaches are prone to being less nurturing of their quarterbacks. And that's another reason Greer cannot bring back Fitzpatrick. 
because doing that would tempt Floris to turn to Fitzpatrick over Tungavailoa at any moment he feels winning a game is at stake. The 2021 Dolphins would be back in 2020. None of that suggests the Dolphins won't be looking for a good quarterback this offseason to be behind and push Tungavailoa. The Dolphins say they want competition. Yeah, it's, it's every position, Greer said. Like I said, it makes everyone great. History has shown it doesn't matter who it is, you're always looking to bring in guys that fit your system and that will push people and make them better, and so competition at every position. We talked about that last year when we were going through it. It's competition at every position, so yeah. But I also want to be clear that Tua is our starter and we're very happy with his development so far. Second, here is top QB in 2021 NFL Draft made the dedicates for Dolphins number 2 QB, reported by my brother, X-Man. Trevor Lawrence, Clemson Tigers. Age, 21, career starts, 35, height, 6 foot 6, weight, 220. If you don't know Lawrence's name by now, it's possible you've been living under a rock the past few years. He has an NFL-ready frame and a cannon for an arm, and McShay has called him the best quarterback prospect he had prospect he has seen come out of college since Andrew Luck in 2012. And all Lawrence does is win. He was 52-2 as the starting quarterback at Cartersville High School in Cartersville, Georgia, and Clemson has lost just once with him under center over three seasons. LSU beat Clemson for the national title last season. A five-star recruit in the 2018 class, he threw 30 touchdown passes for the Tigers as a freshman in 2018, leading them to a national title. After a slow start as a sophomore in 2019, he threw five picks in his first three games, Lawrence finished on a tear, guiding Clemson to a 14-1 season while throwing 36 touchdown passes. He entered this season as the odds-on favorite to go number one in the 2021 draft, though it's not a lock that he'll enter the draft. He did participate in senior day festivities at Clemson, however. Off the field, the tall, long-haired QB was the face of the, we want to play, movement over the summer, movement over the summer, campaigning to have a college football season in 2020 amid the coronavirus pandemic. Ultimately, his wish was granted, and Lawrence has led Clemson to a 10-1 season. Its lone loss came with Lawrence on the sideline. He tested positive for COVID-19 at the end of October and went 35 days between starts, missing two games. But when he returned, he picked up right where he left off and threw for 400-plus yards in a win over Pittsburgh. I learned a lot about myself, and who I want to be, and became a better person through this whole process, Lawrence said earlier this month. But I want that to end in a good way football-wise and be able to play for a championship. That's been the goal all along. His next challenge is on deck, can Lawrence get another national championship and carry his winning ways to an NFL team in need? Trevor in 2020 have an impressive stats, 2,753 passing yards, 69.2% completion rate, 2% completion rate, 22 touchdowns and 4 interceptions in 9 games, plus 211 rushing yards and 7 TDs. He is ranked number 1. Most recent, Lawrence had a huge day in the ACC championship game, a 31-10 win over Notre Dame throwing for 322 yards, rushing for another 90 and accounting for three touchdowns. Now Clemson rolls into a meeting with Ohio State in the All-State Sugar Bowl, 8.45 p.m. Eastern Time, January 1, on ESPN, as one of the four college football playoff teams. If it wins, then it's on to the national title game against either Alabama or Notre Dame on January. Justin Fields, Ohio State Buckeyes. Age, 21, career starts. 20, height, 6 to 3, weight, 228. When you account for 51 touchdowns in your first season as a starter, you're going to garner some attention. And Fields has largely lived up to the attention in his second year under center for the Buckeyes. Fields grew up in Georgia and was a standout on the football field, a five star recruit who ranked number one in the 2018 ESPN 300, ahead of Lawrence, and the baseball diamond, a middle infielder with perhaps MLB upside. But Fields chose football, committing first to Penn State before changing his decision and heading to Georgia. His final high school season was featured on season two of Netflix's QB1, Beyond the Lights. He spent one season at Georgia behind Jake Frum before transferring to Ohio State ahead of the 2019 season. He was granted immediate eligibility. 
In a statement, Fields said, I said, I have no regrets about my time at UGA and have no hard feelings for the school or football program. He immediately made an impact at Ohio State, becoming just the third Buckeyes QB in the past 50 years to win each of his first 13 starts. He was the first Big Ten player with 40-plus passing touchdowns and 10-plus rushing touchdowns in the same season. A Heisman finalist, he led Ohio State to the college football playoff, but it lost 29-23 to Clemson in the semifinal. It is his only loss at Ohio State. In August, while other conferences were preparing to start their seasons, Fields established a petition requesting the Big Ten immediately reinstate the 2020 season. The Buckeyes began play in October, and Fields had just 11 incompletions through three games. He had 11 touchdown passes in that time frame. Now 6-0, the Buckeyes are primed for another title run behind Fields' stellar 89.5 total QBR. 5 total QBR. Fields' downfield accuracy and ability to create plays under pressure help make him one of the top quarterbacks in the class, though he has thrown five picks in Ohio State's two toughest games this season, leading to questions. With a win over Lawrence and Clemson next week, Fields could have two more chances to show NFL scouts that he belongs in the number one pick discussion. Justin Fields' 2020 stats 1,521 passing yards, 72.6% completion rate, 15 touchdowns and 5 interceptions in 6 games plus 274 rushing yards and 5 TDs. Most recent game, Ohio State is the three seed in the college football playoff and will face Clemson in the All-State Sugar Bowl on New Year's Day in a showdown between the top two quarterback prospects in the draft. A victory there would give the Buckeyes a shot at the national title 10 days later. The deadline to declare for the NFL draft has not been set, which would be the next which would be the next date to watch for the Ohio. 3. Zach Wilson, BYU Cougars. Age, 21, career starts, 27, height, 6-3, weight, 210. Wilson got his first scholarship offer in 2015 from Weber State. He was a a skinny little noodle, a former assistant said, and committed to Boise State two years later. A late offer from BYU, however, gave him something Boise could not, playing college ball close to his family. Wilson, one of six children, grew up in Draper, Utah, in a family of Utah Utes fans, but the opportunity to regularly see his family throughout college made him shift his allegiances. His father, Mike, served as his private quarterback's coach through high school, helping him to big numbers both through the air and on the ground at Corner Canyon High School. Wilson became the Cougars' youngest starting QB ever at 19 years, two months when he took over for them against Hawaii in 2018, accounting for four, touch for four touchdowns and a win. Wilson brought BYU to the famous Idaho Potato Bowl that season, where he went 18 for 18 for 317 yards and four touchdowns in another victory. But his sophomore season brought middling numbers, 11 touchdown passes, nine picks, and a six-week absence in the middle of the campaign with a fractured thumb. The 2020 season has been magical for Wilson, however, as he has soared into contention for a top-10 pick. The Cougars went 10-1 in the regular season, and Wilson had 43 total touchdowns with only three interceptions. He ranked in the top five of qualifying passers nationally in yards, 3,692, yards per attempt, 10.8, and completion percentage, 73.2%. He could become the first BYU quarterback selected in the first round since Steve Young in 1984. Wilson finished the season with 425 passing yards and five total touchdowns in the Cougars' blowout win over Boca Raton Bowl. Zach Wilson 2020 stats. 3,267 passing yards, 73.2% completion rate, 30 touchdowns and three interceptions plus 242 rushing yards and eight TDs. Recent game. With his bowl game behind him, Wilson has a decision to make. If he now declares for the draft, the pre-draft process would ramp up for one of the biggest risers so far. 4. Trey Lance, North Dakota State Bison. Age, 20, career starts, 17, height, 6-4, weight, 226. Lance may have played only one game in 2020. The Bison, who have decided to play a spring season amid concerns over the pandemic, 
scheduled just one game in the fall against Central Arkansas, but in 2019 he set an NCAA record for most passes thrown in a season without an interception and became the first freshman to win the Walter Payton Award for Most Outstanding Offensive Player in the FCS. And to think he was almost not a quarterback. Lance grew up playing running back until he transitioned to QB and led a wing T offense at Marshall High School in Minnesota. He learned to play the position by working with his father, former CFL cornerback Carlton Lance, in the family's backyard. Most of his Power 5 offers were to play wide receiver or defensive back, but Lance ended up at North Dakota State, following Carson Wentz, Carson Wentz and Easton Stick under center for the Bison. In his only full season as the starter, Lance threw for 2,786 yards and 28 touchdowns and added another 1,100 yards and 14 scores on the ground. He has never lost a college game, leading the Bison to an FCS championship in 2019. In his lone start in 2020, he went 15 of 30 for 149 yards, two touchdowns and an interception. And again, he was effective on the ground, rushing for 143 yards and two additional scores. Will experience factor into draft position? Lance never faced an FBS team during his college career, and he had just 17 career starts. According to ESPN Stats and Information Research, six quarterbacks have been taken in the first round with fewer than 20 college starts since 2006. That list is a mixed bag. Mitchell Trubisky 13, Cam Newton 14, Dwayne Haskins Jr. 4, Dwayne Haskins Jr. 14, Mark Sanchez 16, Kyler Murray 17, and Ryan Tanhill 19. Lance will be 20 years old when he is drafted, and he is likely to become the first player drafted into the NFL who was born in 2000. Recent information, Lance has already decided to forego his spring season at North Dakota State and enter the draft. With only one game under his belt this year, next year's NFL combine will be important, as would a potential pro day, so scouts can get a closer look at him. Alabama Crimson Tide. Age, 22. Career starts, 15. Height, 6 to 3, weight, 214. Jones grew up in Florida playing Pop Warner, idolizing Tim Tebow and even having a stint as a child model in multiple commercials and advertisements. A four star recruit out of the Bulls school, he went to Alabama in 2017 after originally committing to Kentucky. He redshirted before serving at Tua Tungavailoa's backup over two seasons, but twice replaced Tungavailoa in 2019 as the Crimson Tide starter because of injuries. Though he caught the nation's attention as Alabama's quarterback, Jones didn't enter the 2020 season with much draft hype. He wasn't even a lock to hang on to his starting role, with five-star freshman Bryce Young also heading to Tuscaloosa. But after stacking up elite numbers en route to an 11-0 record, he is square in the middle of the round one mix. Kuiper and McShay debated Jones' status in, no status in November, with Kuiper noting Jones' prowess on downfield throws. Jones has four games with more than 400 passing yards and six with at least four passing touchdowns this season. He hit both of those marks on Saturday in a shootout win against Florida in the SEC championship game. Jones has started just 15 games for the Crimson Tide, so it's possible he could return for another season to try to be the number one QB in the 2022 class. Jones' 2020 stats, 3,739 passing yards, 76.5% completion rate, 32 touchdowns and 4 interceptions plus 1 rushing TD. Next, will Alabama complete its undefeated season with a national championship? Two games stand in the way. The Tide meet Notre Dame in the Rose Bowl game presented by Capital One on January 1st, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, ESPN, before a potential trip to the title game. Will Jones declare for the draft? We'll know more when Aleft. We'll know more when Alabama's season ends. 6. Kyle Trask, Florida Gators. Age, 22. Career starts, 21 height, 6 to 5, weight, 240. It has been a long road for Trask, but his breakout 2020 season puts him deservedly in this group of high-end quarterbacks in this class. First, he didn't even start for a high school team after his freshman year. Why? Former Houston Cougars and current Miami Hurricanes signal caller Derek King also went to Texas's Manville High School. Then Trask went to Florida and didn't see much action. He redshirted in 2016 and then rode the bench for two seasons behind Felipe Franks, who is also in this class. After Franks was injured in 2019, 
However, Trask went in and threw for 2,941 yards, 25 scores and 7 interceptions. He retained the job, while Franks transferred to Arkansas. Trask has taken his game to another, to another level this season. He set the Florida record for most touchdowns thrown in a season, 43, and became the first FBS player in 15 seasons, and only one in SEC history, to throw at least three in nine consecutive games. He has done it in 10 of 11 games this season. Trask could be a finalist for the Heisman Trophy. Kyle 2020 Stats 4,125 passing yards, 69.7% completion rate, 43 touchdowns and 5 interceptions, plus 3 rushing TDs. Kyle next game, it'll be the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic to cap the Gators' 8-3 season. That December 30th meeting with Oklahoma, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, ESPN, will be Trask's final college game. But having accepted an invite to the Senior Bowl, he will have another opportunity to make a case for the first round next April. Senior Bowl activities will take place during the final week of January. And now, the most important part of this video. Who is the right choice for the Miami Dolphins? And why did he? I have to say sorry to Tua Tungavailoa's fans. I know what I'm saying will be controversial to legions of Dolphins fans in South Florida and beyond. In fact, I can hear the die-hard fans already. Tua is a rookie and it's too early to give up on him. Chan Gailey's play calling is handcuffing Tua. Tua will be great with some better weapons. Those are all, excuses, that fans use to defend the current quarterback because they have to believe so bad that the team has finally figured out the position that has vexed the team since Dan Marino retired in 2000. Here, I will break down five reasons to explain why these kinds of arguments don't stand up to the scrutiny of evidence that Tua has put forth so far this year. 1. Tua is a rookie and it's too early to give up on him. I wanted to begin with this to clear the air. I am not saying that the Dolphins should give up on Tua. I recognize that he's a 22-year-old rookie that started the equivalent of just over two full college seasons, 32 games in three seasons, 32 games in three years. I believe it's still possible that Tua can become the quarterback for this team. What that said, I can't ignore what I've seen so far this season. Tua has played well enough to actually contribute to three of the Dolphins' six victories in games he has started. The rest of the time, he has been relegated to caretaker, allowing the defense and special teams to carry the team to victory. 2. Chan Gailey's play calling. Many fans are blaming offensive coordinator Chan Gailey for the struggling Dolphins' offense. There is some merit to the criticism. After all, Gailey is getting paid to make the most of the Dolphins' talent and, if you remove defensive special teams' touchdowns, the Dolphins are averaging 22.5 points per game which is tied for 23rd with the Chicago Bears and Houston Texans. Nobody disputes that the Dolphins' offense is much more effective with Ryan Fitzpatrick behind center than Tua but the narrative is that in some way that Gailey is scaling back the offense, scaling back the offense, for Tua and forcing him to throw short passes and check downs. According to the statistics assembled by Pro Football Reference, Tua and Fitzpatrick are attempting passes of approximately the same length. Intended air yards per attempt, AIYPA, measures how many yards past the line of scrimmage the receiver is on each pass attempted. Fitzpatrick is averaging 7.8 AIYPA, Tua is averaging 7.5 AIYPA. As you can see, Chan Gailey isn't confining Tua to dink and dunk passes like most. 3. Tua will be great with better weapons. I do not doubt that the offense would be better if both quarterbacks had more talented skill position players around them. Injuries have hurt an already thin wide receiving corp, especially the losing Devontae Parker to injury the past two and a half games. Where the disconnect comes in is that Fitzpatrick is throwing to the same players that Tua is. Why does the offense spring to life when Fitzpatrick is in the game but struggles with Tua? 4. Alabama Syndrome the answer is pretty simple. Tua suffers from what I would we'll call Alabama syndrome. This is caused by having five-star superior players at almost every position compared to the opponent. What are the symptoms? 1. Being hesitant to throw to a receiver that isn't open by 3 to 5 yards. Having four current future first-round wide receivers makes that possible. 2. Holding onto the ball too long because your offensive line usually gives you an eternity to throw. Is it correctable? Is it correctable? No past current Alabama quarterback has been able to overcome it but I believe it's possible that Tua could be the first. 
After the way he spoke following his first benching versus the Denver Broncos, I thought that Tua might have learned his lesson. Here is a quote from his post-game interview. It's one thing hearing from Fitz when I come to the sideline about taking completions, it may seem like he's covered but you've just got to get completions, and then it's another to see him go out there and kind of doing it. For me, a lot of the times I see guys that are covered, but they're not necessarily covered. Just being to see a lot of what Fitz was doing when he got in, a lot of it was learning lessons. Since a decent game against the Bengals in the fourth quarter against KC, who, by then, had, called off the dogs, Tua has reverted to his old ways. In Las Vegas, a city known for gambling, Tua did nothing but play it safe all game. How else do you explain going 17 for 22, 77% completion percentage, and completion percentage, and passing for a measly 94 passing yards? 5. So why bring in another quarterback? The Dolphins need to do something they failed to do during the entire Ryan Tanhill era, bring in competition. Competition is always good in the NFL and, worst case scenario, the Dolphins have two good NFL QBs. Most teams need two in case of injury and whichever loses the competition could always be flipped in a year or two for draft capital. You may be asking, why this year? Well, this is the last year the Dolphins have multiple first-round picks thanks again Houston Texans. I'm not advocating using Houston's top 10 pick on a QB. The Dolphins need to use that pick to select a sure, difference maker, whether that's at wide receiver, LB Micah Parsons, or LT Penny Sewell. Where I advocate taking a QB is with the team's second, first round pick, if a player like BYU's Zach Wilson or North Dakota State's Trey Lance is available. If nilable. If not, then the Dolphins shouldn't force themselves to select a quarterback. With better weapons and a full NFL offseason, that doesn't include rehab, Tua might learn how to run a full NFL offense. However, as of this moment, Tua is playing like a quarterback, afraid to lose, instead of, trying to W in.